put your swimsuit on because in this video we will take a look at how you can add water and waterfalls in Giro using a really nice water shader. Source code for this project is down in the description and if you find this helpful please subscribe. So let's dive in. We will be using and modifying a shader made by Bramwell. He makes some really high quality tutorials and if you're interested in how it's made I've linked this video in the description. So let's start with downloading the shader. So you want to go over to my GitHub and give it a star and then follow the instructions on how to download. Next, you want to import the water shader. So open up Grow and make a new 3D scene. And then we want to add a mesh instance. So hit this plus button and search for mesh and add a mesh instance 3D. Set the mesh on the inspector property to a plain mesh. Open up the plane mesh and set the size to something bigger like 20 on both the X and the Y. And we can subdivide it as well. Next we can go to the material and make a new shader material. And open it up. And on the shader we can drag in our water shader. And now we will have some water that's working nice. We can increase the subdivision. If you have no subdivision, it will just move the whole plane up. But if you subdivide it, the more you subdivide, the better, but also more performant. So keep it as low as you can, but also at a good value. Now we have the basic water setup. So next, let's make the waterfall. So open up Blender and select everything and press X. Press Shift A and add a new mesh and add a cube. Go into edit mode by holding down tab. Let's scale this on the Z and scale it on the Y. You can press Ctrl R to add some cuts in it and on your scroll wheel scroll on it to add a few more cuts. I'm gonna add some cuts on that direction and some cuts on this direction. So something like this. Enable X-ray in the top right corner and that will allow us to select uh, vertices that are behind. So I'm gonna select the top ones, enable proportional editing by pressing O or this one in the top middle. Next you can press G and on your scroll wheel you can make the radius bigger. And I'm gonna make it something like this and then G and X move it something like that and then also rotate it a little bit. I think that looks good. I'm gonna select everything and scale it on the Y axis a little bit more. I'm gonna go into the modifiers. That's the screwdriver over here. Click add modifier and search and search for a subdivision surface. It's right here. I'm gonna set the level to two and I'm also gonna right click the mesh and hit shade smooth. Now we have a pretty good water mesh and we can save this. So in your Godot project, open up in file manager, then you copy the path and in Blender, paste it as the path. Here you can save it. I'm gonna save it as waterfall. Save that and open up Godot. We'll start importing it. We can drag it into our scene. So I'm gonna drag it in, move it up a little bit. And in order for us to add the shader to the waterfall, we have to right click the waterfall and do editable children. And that will allow us to change the cube. Go into the geometry and on material override, you can drag in the water shader. And now the waterfall itself will have the water shader can use the same shader but it doesn't really look like a waterfall right so what we want to do is duplicate the water shader we can call it waterfall shader duplicate that and drag in the waterfall shader instead you want to open it up and open the shader up zoom out a little bit i'm going to drag this part up so it's easier to see go over here and on the panning we want to change the panning from 0.1 and 0.1 to just zero and making it minus 1.5 and set the same values on this one to 0 and minus 0 0.5. The way it worked before was that it was going in different directions but now it's going in the same direction as you can see also here on the material. Right now it's looking a little bit weird and that's because we need to UV unwrap it. So go over to Blender again and select the mesh and go into UV editing and you select everything by pressing A and then U to unwrap and you can do the smart UV project and then OK. Save this and open up Grow and that will now look a little bit better. But it does look like it's going in the wrong direction so instead of negative I'm gonna make it positive. So make these 1.5 instead of minus 1.5. 
and you can see that it's moving and we don't want it to move the mesh on the waterfall and to fix that we go into fragment here and go into vertex and we can just disconnect it from the vertex and that way it won't move the actual mesh you do see that there are some cuts in the mesh and one way to maybe fix it is with opening up Blender and on the UV unwrapping, instead of doing smart UV unwrap, you can select one uh, face by going into the face select, clicking on one face, then select A and then U and then you can do light map pack and then you can do the same again, but this time unwrapping by follow active quads. You will get the whole thing right here. Just fit it to the UV area. It doesn't have to be exact. Save it. Go back to Godot. And you will see that it's looking a little bit better. It doesn't have those drastic cuts, but it still has some cuts in it. And there is no perfect fix for this that I've found. As you can see, the background is a little bit bad now. But you can also try the smart UV unwrap and try that out. On the smart one, the back looks okay, but the sides and top look a little bit bad. So you will have to try which one works best for your mesh. I also want to show uh, how to make some foam particles at the bottom. So we're gonna select the node 3D and add a GPU. I imported a particle texture by Kenny. I'll link it in the description and we will use it for the foam. So on the draw passes, make a new pass on pass one and make it a quad mesh. You could also make this um, sphere and do that as well for a 3d effect and that could actually look really cool as well but i'm gonna show it with a quad mesh drag in the smoke onto the material on the quad mesh and then you want to go into the material on transparency enable alpha then on blend mode add go into the shading and make it unshaded you could have it shaded but i think it looks better unshaded on vertex color enable use as albedo i'm gonna drag this out so you can easily see then we have on albedo, we have the texture. I'm gonna go down to billboard and enable particle billboard and enable keep scale. And I also wanna try proximity fade. I'm gonna enable it for now and make it two. It might not work so well for this. I haven't tried it, but I wanna try it. Next, go into the process material and make a new particle process material. On its spawn and position, you can make it a box. You can see when we change the view, it's looking a little bit weird because the waterfall is clipping inside of the other thing. And that's because of the render priority. How I like to do it is the normal render priority for everything is zero. But I like setting the waterfall to one in front of the water. So I'm gonna select the waterfall and set the render priority to one. That will make it always in front of the water. Then on the particles, I want the particles to be in front of the waterfall. So go into the draw pass and on material and make this two. Let's go back to the position and spawn and set the shape to something like four and zero and two. Let's increase the amount because that's easier to see how the shape is working then. So we can adjust it to something that's working well for this. Something like this is working better for this particular one and then we can decrease the amount after we have a, a size that works well so let's close down the spawn and go into accelerations and go into gravity and we don't want it to go down we want it to go up because that's how foam works i think maybe that's a little bit too fast so i'm gonna decrease it a little bit to maybe three and it's already looking pretty good let's go into display and scale and i like doing this for everything by making a new curve opening the curve up and decreasing the last point and then selecting the point and rotating the curve to make it more gradual you can also increase the size because i think the foam is a little bit too small and making the size bigger maybe even something like three that's a little bit too big so 2.5 is a good middle ground for this one select the point again and curve it it doesn't need to be exact on the curve let's close down the actual curve and let's go into color curves i also like to add a polish with making them not just disappear making them more transparent to the end and the way you can do this is on the color ramp making a new gradient texture 1d open the texture up and select the last point and just make it transparent then we can make a new point here and make it visible now that should make the end transparent. You can see the changes over here. And now just move it into the right position. 
I don't like that the water file is transparent, so I'm gonna go into the fragment and on the alpha, I'm just gonna set it to one because I don't want the waterfall to be transparent. Alpha basically just means transparency. Go to the top of the particle, go into the time and one second works fine. Making the speed a little bit faster, maybe something 1.5 uh, matches the speed of the waterfall. But if you have a slower waterfall, maybe the foam should be slower as well. And then always set the randomness to 1. That's just a good thing to do, because it adds more randomness and makes it look more polished. Now the amount for this is too high, let's say 75. You can already see this looking pretty good. And then some final polish would be to add some uh, sound effects for the waterfall. And you can easily do that on the GPU particles, add a new audio stream player 3D because we want a location in the 3D space and inside of the foam works well. On the stream, I like making them a randomizer to change the pitch a little bit over time. Open it up and go into streams, add element, and we can drag in our sound effect. And then the random pitch we want is 1.2 and I think that's a good level for it. On the audio stream player I'm gonna set it to playing and I think it's a little bit too loud so I'm gonna decrease the volume to minus 10. And that's already better. Setting the max distance to something like 20 also works. That makes it louder the closer you are to it. And I see now they've added this nice circle around it so you can see how far away it will make sound. So that's something really nice. I do realize now that the audio doesn't loop, so you can double click the audio. And we can double click on our waterfall because it, right now it doesn't loop. So double click the waterfall and on the input tab, go into loop mode. And instead of detect, maybe different loop mode works better, but you can also do forward and re-input it. Now if we go into the audio stream player and put it to playing on autoplay, it will work just fine. So here we have the water, the waterfall and the foam. I would recommend making the foam its own scene so you can just instantiate it on the other scenes. So make a new scene. You can copy the GPU particles and just paste it in a new scene. So make a new 3D scene and copy them and paste them in the new scene. We can save this as uh, foam and then we can remove it in the other scene. And then on the chain link here, we can just instantiate the foam. One thing I wanted to mention before I end it off is that you can also change the color of the shader and you can do that in the shader parameters and change it here. And you can also change the shader color in the shader. Doing that is probably better because for me sometimes it doesn't link quite up. So if I make this green for example and save, this overrides it. So then I would have to reset it and now it will be the color that it's set to in the shader. So this one basically overrides the one in the shader. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my work, check out my Ko-Fi in the description and I'll see you in the next one.